Hey everyone, I'm here with your headline update for the week. Um, first up, the call center moved into apartment D. This is going great. Um, praise to Charlie for making all of the IT transition um, very smooth and resolving every pop-up problem that we have. Um, the team is operating comfortably there and um, we're getting ready to go on to the next phase which is making use of their other space. Um, it's likely that the next thing that we're going to do is set up um, two desk spaces in there for um, assistant managers to have a place to have meetings and then also to um, move lockers there. Everything right now um, on these little piece moves is not permanent. It's just kind of like when you're rearranging your house, you have to have a place to put something until it ends up where it ultimately needs to go. So don't panic, we'll let you know before we move anything, um, give you a chance to adjust to that. It's just likely that's gonna be the next move. So we're looking forward to that. A few things to happen before then. These are what um, we're looking forward to most immediately. Next week on Tuesday, we will have training of um, our new software, Ginger. We have a few um, expert users from NVA coming to help guide us through that. We're gonna do two sessions, um, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Those sessions will even be pieced out for specific team members. All of that is documented if it affects you and you're invited to those training sessions in shift planning. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, I haven't seen anything, but I know I'm gonna be a user who relies on Ginger regularly as a customer care team member, or um, maybe as a pet care team member, um, or a bather. We are only able to train so many people in the short amount of time that we have these experts. So we have um, strategically planned for this and plan to, within the next two days, following next Tuesday's training, to meet with you if you're one of those people who don't have a scheduled session. So don't panic. You'll probably be getting a private lesson from myself, Charlie, Eileen, um, Melinda, Alex. We're each going to be able to meet with you to pass that information down um, at an appropriate time and we will get with you to schedule that. Also, next week on um, the 9th, which is Wednesday, we have the flu clinic. This is where we'll be having um, a pharmacist come out to administer flu shots for those who signed up. There's still time for you to sign up. Sign up sheets in the break room. And also we have some forms um, right next to the sign up sheet that you can go ahead and fill out. Um, at least the portions that you know, uh, go ahead and fill out. That'll save you time on the day. The idea is while you're working, we'll kind of send messages to call the next person and you'll come into what's likely going to be set up in the break room, get your flu shot, finish filling out your form, and you'll be able to go back to work, which is very convenient instead of having to go to your doctor for this, go wait in line at the pharmacy for this. It's pretty convenient. Last year, um, flu season, uh, took a lot of people down. Um, we just work in a big group. A lot of us have kids. Um, it's a thing. You know how it works. So um, please consider getting your flu shot. Uh, really saves you in the long time. Okay, next up. We had a potential blunder. Worked out just fine, but um, it just was one of those things where it was like, hey, that was a close one. We should really plan for this better in the future. Regarding cremation, sometimes clients are not ready to make the decision about cremation in the moment. We end up putting the pet on hold and we get written consent to do that. Whether maybe the pet has bit someone or they just haven't decided how they want to proceed yet or they're in shock, we end up putting these pets on hold. There is a specific way to do that. Um, the department managers are going to talk to those who that applies to uh, in the update and in person. My catch as representing what's best for client service and what's best for our patients is that I want to make sure that after we get the hold in writing, when the client communicates with us to let us know what they want us to do with their pet, that we put that down in writing too. That's important. I know it's very tempting if you were to answer the phone. Um, or you were to talk to that client directly to just go directly to the AG's portal and make whatever selection that they chose. Great, do that if you can. 
If not, you'd have to utilize work list messages and so on to communicate with somebody who could. But also, you have to go into that client's record and put in writing um, that you communicated with this with them about this. Ultimately, I'd love to even formally um, get the client to write out their consent, and um, I'm gonna work on a way to do this. But in the meantime, you have to use a 01CC in the patient record to document. Uh, client Miss Smith called Alex Communal Cremation and Clay Paw, uh, communicated this with AGs directly, end of sentence like you can that's basically saying I got clearly from the client on this date and time what their wishes were and then I made it happen in the system and everything else should click in place from here and you've documented that you had this conversation so if anyone else has a question they know who to go with I know y'all know how a, a CCO and the 01 CC's work out just make sure that you document those things as they come up it's especially important in cremation. That's one of the many services that we offer that can't be undone, and it's especially sensitive. So please document so that we can make sure we were accurate with this. The next thing that I wanna mention is um, when we're taking histories for drop-off appointments, we really have to um, be very specific up front and use our critical thinking. When someone's dropping off their pet and we're only allowing for a very short appointment time, customer care team or whoever's taking in that pet, answer all of the history questions. Make sure that there's nothing left undone because we likely won't have time in the allotted appointment time to call the client to have further communications back and forth or get that appointment set up. So it's up to you, whoever takes in that drop off from the client, you have to answer all the questions. That's the CCO question and if it's an annual, the save for nurse question. So specifically with the annual, the save for nurse question is about the, the um, wellness blood work. So you have to be able to have that conversation with clients. Some of you may be uncomfortable with that. Now that I'm outlining specifically that this is a responsibility of yours, find a way to get comfortable with it. It's part of, uh, part of the routine that you'll have going forward. Get all of that information, all of that consent from the client, Make sure you get an accurate phone number. It's kind of like you have to do that drop-off glossary and then you have to do the regular glossary. So be ready for that. Clients are usually ready for that too. They expect it, they know that they're dropping their pet off and they have to tell you the whole story and they have to give you consent. So uh, make sure that you connect the dots on that one. The next thing I wanted to share is that Vet Medin is on back order in all sizes, Vet Medin. So what we've done in the past when we have a back order drug that's an essential drug that we don't really have a sub for is we reach out to clients ahead of time and let them know. Uh, I'm kind of amidst this process right now. I just wanted to tune y'all into it. What I'll do is I'll look for anybody who's, ha who's actively getting that men from us. Uh, we'll send them an email. And then also we'll begin to call them to make sure they got our email and get consent to send a prescription through Roadrunner for them. Roadrunner will be able to compound a substitute and send it directly to the client. So the idea is we inform the client, they give us permission to um, set up a prescription with Roadrunner for them, then Roadrunner will uh, contact the client to get permission to fill it, they'll collect payment, um, outline shipping address and details, and then the drug gets shipped to the client and uh, we can also set up refills with them there on. If and when we get this drug back in stock here, we'll send another message to the client to say, if it's your preference to resume getting it from us, let us know when you need a refill. Otherwise, they can continue to get it through Roadrunner Pharmacy. Just letting you know that that's something that we have. We will have a little bit of stock. Some of it's probably almost out. Some of it is out. We're gonna go ahead and do this with the intent that people who miss our email, miss our phone call, maybe can come here and get a very short supply, um, maybe three to five days worth, just enough time for them to have their new setup with Roadrunner and make sure that their pet doesn't miss any of those um, essential doses. Okay, next point that I have is um, soon to come is ProHeart 12. 
that is um, the 12 month efficacy of ProHeart. Right now we have ProHeart 6. So a dog who's on that would get injections every six months. ProHeart 12 is just once every 12 months, once a year. We are nearly ready to launch this. However, we have some details still to iron out before we hand this down to you. So it's not something that you really wanna begin offering to clients, but if you're asked about it, just you can say, hey, it's coming soon, and maybe you keep a workless message going so that we can let them know when it's available. There are some um, side effects that are not uncommon for pets, but that we'll wanna be educating owners on in advance just so they can make the most informed decision for their pet. So we're getting those together. We're getting some protocols together on how we wanna deal with those side effects and getting pricing. So um, my ideal launch time is in about two weeks on an update. We'll have those details to hand down to you by video and in writing. We'll have protocols, we'll have codes set up in the computer, and then we can go off and running with it. Again, just letting you know that this will probably be um, a change in protocol that we'll have to um, start offering. It'll be ideal to try and line those up with a pet's annual um, for the most convenience for clients. Um, however, pets will still have to come in every six months for Bordetella for those who are on that program. So this may not be a fit for all. Again, more details to come in the protocol. I just know y'all like to know when things are coming. Um, the last thing that I wanted to mention is we're kind of a mist of formalizing our house call process. This is something that's kind of been like trickling in and out. And I think we're at a point where we have enough doctors available um, and we have um, enough of a suspected demand that we may be able to formalize this. We also have an opportunity with another veterinarian in the community who is doing this um, somewhat now, like I say somewhat on a smaller scale now, who may wanna join forces with us. So again, we are in the process of formalizing this, of getting these details together. Um, this will be kind of a slow launch, but these headline um, updates are just to kind of let you know what's coming so that you can work this out in your mind and prepare yourself and you're not shocked when we come back with the update in a few weeks to say, here we are, we've got it together, this is the plan going forward. So just know that that's something that we're working on. The last thing that I would share with you this week is that we are working on a few other things like that. Um, this is our good to great year. And um, although we are here just now in early October, we're actually having our annual planning meeting a little um, off shift this year, just because we're at a point where we need to start projecting out further for bigger projects. So our traction team, which is myself and Melinda and Dr. Patrick, Danielle, Alex, Charlie, Dawn, those people who meet as part of a traction team weekly, will actually be having our annual planning meeting this weekend Sunday and Monday, which is why Dr. Patrick's marked out of appointments on Monday and we won't be in the office. We'll be meeting off-site and working out the details of these things to come. So very exciting. We'll have new rocks for you per department to work on soon after that and we'll have details of these bigger projects lined out more specifically and I would bet we'll have um, a meeting time set up pretty soon where we'll be able to meet with you to share all of these details and let you know the finale of good to great and what's next to come. Okay guys, that's it for this week. Thank you for everything um, that you've done. Really looking forward to um, the big things happening next week. Great. Have a good one.